Today, we'll learn how to give any photo a white background. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link for today's photo in the video description. To make a white background, the first thing we need to do is remove the current background. To do this, we'll get out the selection brush. And since this is a large photo, we'll need to increase our brush size. Now we can begin painting across the subject of our photo, and Affinity will automatically make a selection. And if you ever select too much, you can hold down Alt or Option, and then Paint to remove from your selection. After your selection looks pretty good, make your brush nice and small, and then zoom in to make sure you've selected all the little details on the edges of the model. One of the reasons I chose this photo is because it has an easy subject to select. That works well for a simple YouTube tutorial, but I know some photos have trickier areas to select. If you want to learn how to select difficult areas, you can check out my selection course in the video description. We learn all about selections, including some powerful tools for selecting really tricky areas. Okay, after your selection is looking good, press Command or Control-0 to zoom back out. Now that we have the subject selected, we can apply a mask to remove the background. To apply a mask, press on the mask icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. Then press Command or Control D to deselect. Now that the original background has been removed, we're ready to add a white one. To do this, come to Layer, New Fill Layer. The layer is white by default, but you can easily change its color if you want. Now we just need to drag this layer underneath the photo, and success! We've now added a white background to the photo. Adding a simple white background really is that easy, but I still have a few more tips to show you because I think we can make this look even better. The first thing we'll do is examine our mask and see if we missed any spots. To do this, we'll first select the mask layer, then press B to get out the paintbrush. I recommend you use a small brush size and have 100% opacity and flow and 0% hardness. Also, make sure your paint color is white. Then zoom in and paint over any areas that you missed while making your selection. To help you find any missing spots, you can turn the mask off and on. Also, you can switch your paint color to black if you need to hide parts of the photo that shouldn't be visible. Using black and white paint, I'll keep painting for a few minutes to refine my mask. Now that our mask is looking good, our next task is to fix the blue in his hair. When you replace a background, it's pretty common to find colors from the original background that are reflecting off your subject. There are many ways to remove these unwanted colors, but for this photo, we'll use an HSL adjustment. For now, give the adjustment a crazy color. Now invert the adjustment by pressing Command or Control I. Then use the right bracket key to make your brush a little bigger. Now paint across the blue parts of his hair, making it so the adjustment layer will only affect those areas. If you ever paint too much, remember that you can paint in black to hide the adjustment. And as a little bonus tip, you can press X to instantly switch your paint colors. I find that shortcut to be very useful while painting. 
So we gave this adjustment a crazy color so that we could more easily see where we were painting, but now it's time to give it a better color. So double click on the HSL adjustment, and then change the hue and saturation until the blue hair matches the rest of his hair. That looks so much better. Now that that's taken care of, let's zoom back out with Command or Control Zero. Okay, now we just have one more thing to do, adding a shadow. A shadow will make this whole scene look more convincing and less like we copy and pasted this man onto a white piece of paper. Before adding a shadow though, I want to add some more space to our document. To do this, I'll press C for the crop tool and then crop outwards. Unfortunately, there's now a thin line over here. That's a weird bug in Affinity Photo, which can happen if you apply a mask and then crop outwards. Luckily, it's easy to fix. Just select the mask layer and then paint in black to hide the line. Okay, now we're ready to add the shadow. First, we need to figure out where to place the shadow. There are two ways to do this. The first way is to turn off the mask and look at the original photo. If there's a visible shadow in the photo, then we can make a new shadow in the same spot. Unfortunately, this photo doesn't really have any shadows, which isn't very useful for us. The other way to figure out where our shadow should go is to look at the lighting in the photo. If we examine this image, we can see that this side of his face is brighter than the other side. That means the light was coming from this direction, which means that we should add the shadow over here. Now that we know where to place the shadow, we'll add a new pixel layer, which is where we'll make the shadow. Move the pixel layer so that it's directly above the fill layer, but beneath the model's layer. To make sure that you've placed the layer correctly, you can close this group, leaving just these three layers visible. Then use a nice big brush to paint black all along the side of his body. After that, we'll blur the painting we've done. For shadows, I like to use the box blur filter. Since this photo is so large, a 100 pixel blur actually isn't big enough. To make a bigger blur, just type a number into this box. Then get out the move tool and reposition the shadow. At this point, you could get back out the paintbrush and paint over any areas that need more shadow added to them. Or if you need to cover up areas that aren't supposed to have a shadow, you can make another pixel layer and then paint white over those areas. Then all that's left to do is lower the shadow's opacity. See how the shadow adds some nice depth to the image? Here's the photo we started with, and here's what it looks like with a white background. If you want to learn even more about selections and masking, remember to check out my course in the video description you'll learn all about Affinity's best tools for removing backgrounds. Well, thanks for watching my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.